Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Soleil and I garden in zone 5B in mid-Michigan and I have a lot of new things flowering and lots of stuff going on that looks so great right now in the garden. There's a couple areas that I'm still working on just like every other gardener, but um, join me today for our weekly walkabout and garden tour and I think you'll enjoy it. Well, we're going to go ahead and get this tour started right up front here. I got a couple of great pots that I decided to put my clematis and my black currant calibracoa along with the cake pops verbena. And I think these are going to fill out really nicely. And I got these pots for those of you who are interested. I got these from Costco online. And then I got the obelisks from Garden Supply Company. So I'm looking forward to seeing how those grow on. And I'm going to be putting them probably in this garden bed just to add some additional height. And I'll be putting them where the small concrete planters currently are and moving those to a new location. So right now you're going to see in the garden bed that chives are really blooming well in just about every area that I have them in right now. The birds are chirping. It's been raining for the last few days and we have more rain coming tomorrow. So I was really happy that it stopped today just so I could get you guys um, a little video. And we've got some salvia that is starting to bloom in addition to the chives. We have a couple different varieties of that in here. And we have some phlox in the back, along with some roses. And the tiny wine nine bark are really looking great. Those will be blooming soon, um, but they are just putting on their buds right now. And you can see I have more dianthus that are starting to really show some color. So I think those are going to begin to pop this week because we have some really warm weather coming this week. Um, this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, we're probably going to get up to 88 and 90 degrees, so it's going to be a hot and humid one. I'm looking forward to seeing some sunshine though. So I planted out some annual verbena in here, and you can see that the black scallop ajuga that is throughout this bed is blooming now, and it has a really pretty kind of deeper tone to the blooms on it. Isn't that beautiful? And then we have the deep purple of the Maynite salvia blooming in this bed. And this bed is where I put the scaviola that I had purchased the other day. We have buds all over these blue muffin viburnums. These are called blue muffin because if you have a different variety of viburnum to be able to cross pollinate with them, they will make blue berries. The Oscar Peterson roses in the back of this bed are putting on lots of buds. So those are going to be blooming soon. And then this black lace elderberry, I can verify for folks now that it is going to bloom. I see lots of buds on it as long as the deer don't come along and eat them off should be quite beautiful. So I'm just going to kind of back up here so you can see what this bed looks like right now in its totality. But I think it looks really nice. Um, the composition of the design makes me happy to see and I like the different colors of green, the different leaf shapes and sizes and textures along with the different foliage colors. My front sunbed right now is looking really beautiful. This is one of my favorite times of year for um, this bed because of the alliums. And these are the purple sensation alliums that you see with the kind of lollipop look. And um, they just look spectacular with these orange rocket barberries and the color of those. And very soon, the dutzias that are in this bed should fully open. Just look at the beautiful, almost teardrop, teardrop shaped flowers on these dutzias. 
such a pretty color of pink. Down here I had several folks comment about the Allium caritaviense that we have here. And um, I'm going to be getting some more of these this fall. I'm really looking forward to adding some more of that color into this bed. That kind of gray-blue foliage is so beautiful. Sometimes I kind of start to get on a particular type of plant. And right now I'm kind of loving on that gray-blue foliage. And so I'm trying to add a little bit more of that into my garden this year. But everything is just looking really, really healthy. The weeping cherry is putting out a lot of new growth. And last year we did a really nice trim on that. And it's just fleshing out exactly how I was hoping. So that's thrilling. I have a really cool viburnum back in here. This is called the Wabi Sabi. I love this. It should get a bit bigger so that you can see it better um, back behind all of this beautiful hosta foliage. Everything is so immense and incredibly lush right now because of how much rain we have had. Here the goat's beard is putting on some blooms. That's the Chantilly lace variety. And all of the hostas are looking just amazing everywhere in the yard. They're big, they're bold, and they're quite beautiful. This small bed over here has the bedazzled hostas in it and some of the magenta dianthus. It's the Paint the Town magenta variety and they are starting to put out quite a few buds and will be blooming very soon so that will be a nice bright pop of color. Another thing that's beginning to bloom in the garden right now are the large root geraniums. So we have the beautiful bright pink flowers on those and those are scattered throughout the garden as a really nice kind of filler plant that provides some color when there's not a lot of other things in bloom. And a little bit of evergreen touch as well. We have some Virginias down here and they are right next to this Wygela, which is beginning to put on its flower blooms as well. Seems the sun is trying to come out now. Hopefully I won't get too many shadows. The bearded irises are blooming. And um, I added some to the bed over on the neighbor's side as well. And they look lovely. And they smell so wonderful too. They don't bloom for a very long time. But I tell you what guys. Oh they smell so good. And here you can see that this burgundy glow ajuga is starting to have some of its new growth that has that burgundy glow about it. And there's just kind of a menagerie of plants in here right now because I'm testing out some different ones to see how they do. The lungworts and the virginia and um, some lilies just because I want to see how they do with the deer, the rabbit, and the sun that's in this particular spot. Look at all the blooms on these geraniums. Isn't that pretty? The Hakona Chloe grass is really starting to push out now. So much beauty right now in the potager. Everything is just lush. Some more bearded irises and the sedum over here. Um, some folks asked me what kind that is. It's called Marina. M-A-R-I-N-A -A sedum. And I got that at a local nursery. 
We have lots of onions and lettuce and garlic in here. We have cilantro that has seeded itself. We have some roses that are putting on buds. These are going to be a light pink rose. And we have this nine bark that has buds all over it. Just look at those buds. These will be very, very beautiful when they bloom. The container plants are looking pretty as well. They're starting to kind of flush out. We have one with some dahlias over here. And then this walkway with the chives and the ajuga. And the beautiful little violas. And then the lush big leaves of the Virginia on the other side. And then we have some Violet Riot Salvia that's going to bloom soon as well. The cardoons are growing on really well and the nasturtiums are looking fantastic still. And I actually have a couple of blooms. Let's see, here's one that is just coming out right here. Isn't that gorgeous? I think this is the apricot color. And then the other one will bloom a pink color, but is it, it's so pretty. I love that. Very tropical looking color as well. Now over here in the side bed, I had to do a little bit of staking because the peonies were growing right over the top of my little lime hydrangea back here. And so now is a really good time to be staking things because they'll just get lanky and flop. But look at the rainbow sensation Wygela back here behind the lady. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, the blooms haven't even fully opened yet, but they're so, so abundant. I think that's going to look beautiful as it gets bigger. And then this Wygela over here also has some buds on it as well, which are much darker rose color. This one might be the Whining Roses. I think it's the Dark Horse though. Dark Horse for sure, yes. And then my Pink Mink Clematis is almost up to the top of that trellis. And my other Dutzia here. Again, look at those tiny little teardrop buds. They're so cute and precious. I love it. The golden ticket privet over here is a really nice golden limey glow. And then this bed is just full of blooms. We have the regular ajuga that is still blooming. So you guys can tell that it lasts a fairly decent amount of bloom time. And that large root geranium again, right behind that hydrangea. And the nine bark is just glowing still. Now, one thing that people have asked me a lot is how do I keep the grass out from between my rocks? And as you can see, there's a very strong edge between the grass and the rocks. And this is something that we do with a string trimmer is just keep the grass a few inches back so that it doesn't get right up against them. So we have some Patriot Hosta back there and then this pink or lavender type bloom is the Hesperus matronalis, which is a dame's racket. You'll see this along wood sides or along the road this time of year. And then the lungwort is just about to go over. So it's at the end of its bloom cycle. 
and uh, this is about the time when I begin to think about cutting them back and I cut them back quite hard all the way back to the ground and then the new leaves will flush out about a week after that. There's another rainbow sensation just being covered in buds. Now some people may not need to cut their lungworts all the way back. Um, instead they simply deadhead them but for me um, it helps prevent any powdery mildew because they can be pruned to that. In fact, I'll show you one that looks like it's starting to get some on it right now. As you can see what that looks like. It looks like a light white powdery substance. So because it's going to be getting very hot soon, I anticipate that will become even more of an issue. So we'll be cutting those back. These Japanese ferns are getting much bigger. And really you can tell how much lightening up they've done and they'll get probably another foot tall, uh, taller than they are right now. And everything in this garden bed is just really filling out. The leaves on the hostas are really large this year. You know, some years they're bigger than others, and this is definitely a very abundant one. Here's a Crosa Regal hosta. It has that blue tone that I'm loving on right now. Over here, the lungworts are still blooming that pretty blue. And all of the little violas that I grew from seed are really popping now. Those adorable. I love the color that they are. And then these azaleas. I wish that it hadn't just rained as heavily as it had so that you could see these looking a little bit more upright. But aren't they beautiful? This one almost reminds me of an orchid with the markings on it. Such a gorgeous pink. And then the purple back behind it. And the gorgeous bleeding heart. It's so tall. And the sum and substance hostas, you guys, the size of these leaves are ridiculous. I don't know if you can even tell. Let me see if I can put my hand by one so you can see how big my hand is. You see that? Ginormous. Ginormous. I mean, the hostas this year, it's definitely been wet enough so that they really are robust. And this Japanese maple is really filling out this year. So, so pretty. And here is another bloom on the nasturtium. And the other plant that's in there is a big rhubarb. I have this oak leaf hydrangea that is doing inc incredible. And there's one that is back against the fence back there behind that big blue hosta as well. Along here we have Patriot hosta lining this bed, which is really pushing out the growth. And then the bed on the left is lined by Gold Edger hosta. And you can see that this bed is full of flowers as well with the pink lamium on the left. In the middle, we have the pink poppet wygela. And then the blooming geranium. Along with the brennera, still putting out some tiny blue blooms. The woodland flax back here is still looking beautiful. I can't wait to see the astilbes bloom. 
And these lungworts, you can see these are the pretty in pink and they are just getting to the end of their bloom cycle as well. They do look like they have pushed leaves out already, so I will probably just deadhead the pretty in pink and will not cut them back as severely as the others. Now I do want to take you down here real quick just to show you the pink fizz, which I think is stunning and very unique. I just look at those cute little pink blooms. And the variegation on the leaves, that's the pink fez hookerella. And I just love the variegation. I did move one of my rhododendrons over here because I know they're going to get crowded. And so I just moved a hosta out and uh, gave it to a friend to make room for it. The catching fire hookerellas are looking great too. Look at how bright those are. And some of my favorite hostas are these blue and limey green June hostas. That's what they're called, hosta June. The ladder's out because I do need to prune my plum trees, uh, but I have not been able to convince my husband that it's safe for me to climb a ladder yet. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes or when and if that happens. It might have to wait a little bit, which is okay because, you know, they, I don't care whether I get fruit off of them or anything like that. Do we have a Sun King Aurelia in here? along with a tassel fern. And then I have decided, or I had decided, that uh, for those of you who have watched my channel for a while, you know I had a line along this right edge, even if you watched my last garden tour. And um, I decided that the grass along the edge to me just looked kind of messy. So instead I'm going to continue to divide the curly fries hostas that are along here and use those as an edger instead. I do like grasses, but this type of sedge or carex, whatever it is, I just felt it looked a little too messy and I'll show you what I did with it in just a second. But for now, I just want you to check out the colors. I mean, wow, does this bed pop or does this bed pop? And I'm getting a few apples on my apple tree. But look at the new growth on that Pieris. I mean, it's stunning, especially with that mahogany monster hookera in front of it. We have some palace purple hookahs back here. Some red rover hookahs. Mulberry hookahs. Lots of different hookahs, and I think it just makes for a beautiful color and contrast. And the barberry that we have here goes so well with that as well. So I think things are looking really, really good here. This has come along uh, a long way since the beginning of last year and is starting to look much more established. So let me show you real quick what we did with the Carex. So for those of you who are new to my channel, this is the Wayback Garden, which is pretty wild. And we have just started adding some steps back here using some old concrete pavers that have been smashed up and you can see along the edge of the walkway here is what I have done with the Carex and I think it looks much more natural and beautiful here than it did in the more formal gardens that we have on the other side of the fence. 
Everything in this bed is starting to fill out. I had a lot of starts. So um, when this garden bed started last year, it did not have rocks lining the front of it. It was just three arborvitas here. So last year we were fortunate enough to find a another few people who had rocks and were able to line out this bed and begin planting it. So I added all of this um, just last year and it's looking really good and filling in quite well. So I did a lot of dividing of the lilies that I got and these are some proven winter varieties uh, from the Sound of My Heart series and um, I'm looking forward to seeing those bloom this year. And I've added some divisions of the bilberry hookera and the midnight masquerade penstem in there. And in the middle is the diamond rouge hydrangea. That one was simply gorgeous. Now you can see looking down this long border that I have a number of chives that are looking rather lovely right now and beginning to bloom to their heart's content. And what I'm loving about this border this year is that we're beginning to get much more in the way of layers and depth than we have in the past because the shrubs are beginning to get larger and things are beginning to fill in that were planted from divisions. So it's just great. Um, like you can see the Circus canadensis, this redwood up above everything. And you can see the barberry up above all of the other herbaceous perennials, which you couldn't so much last year. And I do have another Wygela in here. Uh, this one is the Checkmark Trilogy and it looks like it's putting on some blooms. This one had some struggles. It was a clearance plant um, when I initially planted it, but it looks like it's finally really taking to its new home. Then we have hydrangea back here, along with a clematis that we just planted last year from a plug, and it looks like that one's going to put on some blooms this year. And then we're full of some lilies. Can't wait to see those pop up. I'll be interested to see how tall they get. We've got some great phlox in here, ultra pink phlox, I believe, maybe some white phlox. And then I've been dividing this hookera, which I cannot recall the name for the life of me. But I think that's going to look nice as it fills out and kind of covers the ground there to give that pop of light color. Because we do have quite a bit of green in this area, at least until the dianthus begins to bloom. The Duchess of Edinburgh is so ready to pop. It just hasn't quite decided to open yet. That is going to be gorgeous. The new growth on these barberries, the limoncello, are absolutely fantastic. It's got that tinge of red. And we have the violet riot salvias over here. <laughs> Yo, oh my goodness, I just have no words for the beauty of this bed right now. I mean, look at the Wygela and the Azalea and the Japanese maple. We are so lucky to have such beauty in this world. Look at the blooms on this. stunner. I think this one is the wine and roses, you guys. Every once in a while I get them mixed up, but I believe this is the wine and roses one. And this one has been planted for probably six years. Just 
just so stunning. And over here we have um, some Allium giganteum or gladiator. They're both very similar. I'm not sure which it is, but it will be a very big globe. And beautiful foxgloves. And then next to this Wygela, eventually we're going to have this beautiful strawberry hydrangea. So we're going to have this nice kind of hydrangea, which is on the other side is a vanilla strawberry hydrangea, and then the Wygela, and then another hydrangea on this side. So it should frame the fountain really nicely, I think. This trellis is completely covered at this point with the clematis. So I can't wait to see that one bloom. And that will also have a strawberry sundae hydrangea in front of it. And we have some Cheyenne spirit cone flowers in this bed that are just beginning to get big. And I've planted out some of my snapdragons in this bed along with some of the annual alyssums and I think this is going to begin to fill in as the weather heats up here. Then we have this fire gold spirea, looking pretty. And this trellis will have some clematis on it as well. But it is the first year that I've planted them back there and they are plugged, so they'll be rather small. I'm not sure if they'll bloom. But this Japanese maple is also looking great. We have the quick fire hydrangea and then a, a stunning combination right here with the superstar spirea right in the background. We have some columbine and I believe these are the black barlow version. I had ordered pink barlow or bought pink barlow and they turned out to be black so I needed to move them and I think they look really great uh, now that they're over here. And then we have the curly wee hostas and the pink diamond bleeding hearts. And then back in the corner, we have tons of buds all over this clematis, along with the spearmint hookera around the base and the gorgeous autumn frost hosta with more salvia and then the Diamond Lake. This one's starting to get big. And that's that, that's that blue color that I'm just really thrilled about this year. Don't ask me why, but it's making me happy. So I'm going with it. And we have some raspberries planted over here. The Miss Kim Lilac is still waiting to bloom. There are some blooms down kind of hidden under here, but I'm just happy that it looks like it's putting on as much new growth as it is. So I think it's really well established at this point. And then look at this clematis. These are some really big blooms, you guys. Just gorgeous. And there's so many more buds on it that are getting ready to open. And the mock orange right here is continuing to bud up. They're getting bigger and bigger. The superstar spireas are also in full bud. I expect those to be blooming next time we do a video. And this bud is continuing to just look amazing. We have the salvia in this bed with the larger salvia here being the crystal blue and then the azure snow. And these incredible hydrangeas are going to have this beautiful hardy Cranesville geranium pushing right through them. And this blooms a beautiful blue which I think is just going to look amazing coming through the snowball blooms of these incredible hydrangeas. Can't wait to see what that looks like.
and just so you see what my tomatoes and clematis planter looks like here they are they're looking great so healthy got some blooms on the tomatoes and i added some alyssum to the pot so i think that uh, that's going to grow on really well Well, thank you everyone for joining me today. I hope you have enjoyed this tour. I know every time I walk around the garden, I'm just so thankful and grateful for the beauty that it brings and the joy that it brings in my life. So I hope it brought a little bit to yours as well. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Bye.